Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Duchess Braids here and I'm going to be doing my sister's hair today. We're throwing in four knotless braids in her hair. It's been some time since I've really posted knotless braids. So uh, I almost forgot I even had this in my phone because she really came for a completely different style. However, I told her I needed a model within a few days for some a sew-in and she was like, okay, I, I could do that. So I, we decided on just throwing four simple braids in her hair and then she came back the next week. And you guys have already seen that video of the install I did in her hair, which was like the versatile sew-in. So this was done before that just to keep something going for her hair. So of course, I start off with my famous middle part. Always, you guys already know, I do the middle part first and now I'm going in and cleaning it up. So I'm using, of course, my precision comb to do that, which makes life 10 times easier. Of course, you can part without this, but the point of this comb is by far the best and always helps to make my parts go faster and just be more crisp and cleaner. If you guys are interested in purchasing that, that will be on my website at duchessbraids.com. So yeah, let's get into it. So she only wanted four braids. At first, we couldn't decide what four braids like does she want nipsey hustle four braids you guys should know how that you know that kind of looks or she wanted just straight straight back or so we decided on just coming from a point which is right where i started that part at and we're parting at an angle in two like cutting that half in two and that's how we're gonna braid it and it turns out really really nice so stay tuned to see how it looks and how it turns out. I went ahead and now I'm just kind of cleaning these parts up for you guys. And as you can tell, I put a product on first and then I go in with the comb and just clean it up. And as I'm doing that, I'm going back and forth to make sure that the part is equal to the one, the one on the left is equal, the amount of space is equal to the one on the right. So the one on the left, one on the right, is it the same amount of space? Because you don't want a super huge braid or you don't want the parts to be just one small part, one big part. So yeah, you ha really have to pay attention to that when you're doing this style. Everything just kind of have to be proportional. That's my favorite word, y'all already know. <laughs> Proportional is just a big deal for me and you know that makes or breaks a style. So now I'm going in with the jam and I'm not sure which jam I'm using today but you guys already know I either use shine and jam, I use lock in and I think this is a different one but yeah lock in and this one is pretty much the same so I would just recommend that. And if I'm using the shine and jam I'm either using the red one or I'm using the orange one. So once I did that, you guys, because this part is so big, I kind of have to layer the jam in there. So as you can see, like I parted it in the middle, I put a layer of jam there and then I'll part on both sides and put some more jam. It just depends on how wide the space is because one, if you don't do that and you start braiding and you're trying to stitch, the center of her hair is gonna be dry. It's not gonna lay down. So you kind of have to coat it. And I know you guys, some people don't understand why we use so much but it definitely makes or breaks the style so if you can understand that then yeah like the jam or putting the amount that we put on there does definitely make or break the style and so now I'm going in and I'm just stitch braiding and I'm adding the hair as I go you guys already know the gist of it if you're used to my channel we're just stitching and I don't know y'all it's like over time my stitches are just <laughs> It hasn't been stitching how it used to stitch. So maybe it's the nails. The nails are a little long today and I don't know, but we're just throwing something in there. So I'm not being too, too particular. She's only going to have this in for a few days. So yeah. All right, so now I'm at the back and don't get mad at me, y'all, but I do cut this, but eventually I'm going to show you how I braid out the end. So right now it's probably, I'm just braiding down and then it's going to cut and yeah, don't get mad. I am going to, going to show you eventually the whole braid style and braiding it out to the end. All right, so as you can see, I coated 
coated one side the other side and now i'm going down the middle and i'm coating the middle and then if i still feel like there is a lot of hair in between the middles i'm gonna part again and i'm gonna coat that side and then i'm gonna go on the other side and i'm gonna coat that so pretty much that is how i get the hair to lay down and be sleek is by coating it so you guys can't be scared of the jam it definitely makes or breaks the style period so if you don't want to use as much that is your prerogative but this is how i do it and it typically you know lasts longer and just looks better at the end So once I do that, I go in and I use the comb to kind of comb and press, comb and press. As you can see, I'm combing through the hair, through the scalp, and then I'm pressing it down with my finger to kind of mold it into the shape and mold it where I want it to go. So wherever I want the braid to go and line up, that's what I'm pretty much doing is molding on each side. So once I do that, now I have a guideline of where I want the braids to go. So now I'm braiding it in, I'm grabbing the hair as I go and I'm just adding it in there. So when I'm putting in the, the feeding braids, I am sliding it in between my thumb and my pointer and then I just continue to go. There's so many different ways to feed hair in that I've seen braiders do, which, you know, every way it just, is how you braid not everyone braids the same way this is how i braid and it just makes it easier for me to slide it in that way and keep going but there is plenty of different ways you can do it no way is the right or wrong way as long as you have the same results at the end of the day no way is better than the other now i'm at the back and once you get to the back is when i start adding in thicker hair because i definitely don't want the end of the braid to be super skinny just kind of want it to still be as full as you can see from the first braid that i did it is still um, super full but if you don't add in enough hair at the back it could go from being thick to super duper skinny and that's not what we want. So we want the, since it's like hair that kind of thins out at the end, we kind of want it to thin out at the end like this end right here. It start yeah. out thick and then get slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And at the end, it just looks like it comes to a point. Just like if we had braided our own natural hair, you know, it might start out thick and then it gets thinner at the end. So here I am coating it again, um, same same way. Then I'm molding it to where I want the braid to go. And for this, you do want to look on both sides to ensure that you're placing this braid um, along the same lines as the other one so that everything is proportional. As you guys see, I always part out those two little pieces and for the first one, I use it as one leg and then the second piece, I split that in half and use it as two legs. I braid down a little bit some and then I start to add the hair and as you can see, I have my hair rack set up right there and I no longer share the hair out like I used to. I just kind of know what I want and I pick it off a bundle. So this saves me so much time. And this is just comes with experience, guys. I wouldn't recommend doing this right out the bat, learning how to braid. I just say um, this definitely comes with experience, knowing how much hair I need, being able to pick it off of a bundle and just putting it in there. It saves uh, a tremendous amount of time. For me, I think in my brain. However, I do know if I had maybe preset it out, um, maybe I would have been faster. However, when you preset it out, like you might need smaller pieces than you're grabbing, or you might need bigger pieces than you're grabbing. And now you just kind of messed up your braid because you preset it. While if I'm pulling it as I go, I know exactly how much I need. And typically that's the amount that uh, of one leg or so it just depends on where I'm at in the braid definitely when I get to the back of the braid is when I really start adding thicker amounts of hair at the top you know it's just 
my judgment. So that's hard to teach, but it's typically my judgment of how much hair I need until I get to the back. Then it's like, okay, maybe I'll put in as much as one leg is or the size of one leg. I add that in there and just keep going. So when I get to the back, typically I ask the client, does it hurt at the back? And do I need to pull the hair out? Some people, it does not hurt. As you can see, it looks like it's tugging on her nape. And that might be a little uh, painful to see for some people because they, their nape is super sensitive. But for her, it's not. So it just depends on how you take this type of style. So for her, uh, she did not want me to kind of pull the back out. Um, but some clients definitely ask for you to kind of loosen up the back and so that if they have to put it in a ponytail, if I have to do anything, it does not hurt or, you know, pull on their hair. So, yeah, that that is also something you have to ask your clients. And here's the finished look, you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. And thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far and you like the video, go ahead and show me that you like the video. And then comment if you learned anything from this video or if you want to point out anything that you saw in this video. Also, I'm doing the giveaways, guys. So if you want to be a part of my hairstyle giveaway, go ahead and join my email list at duchessbraids.com.